supporters five forces. Now one of the real useful tools that you can use in business studies to make an assessment of the strength and the power of a market is what's called Porter's Five Forces model. As you can see on the screen, Porter's Five Forces are made up of the following five factors. So you've got in the centre competitive rivalry, then on the outside you've got the threat of new entrants, the power of customers, the threat of substitutes and the power of suppliers. Okay. Let's take a look at what these actually mean. Now, most important and imperative is the central one here, competitive rivalry. Michael Porter actually is looking at how competitive is the market, how much rivalry is in the market. Now, Michael Porter's belief, which is probably a common belief, is that if you've got lots of competition in the market, then you tend to try and constantly improve and invest because competition drives down prices. And through driving down prices, as you will be well aware, a company, an organisation, has to look to lower its unit cost. Now, one way of lowering unit costs could be to invest in new technology or new production methods. Typically, investment creates jobs. And because of this, then the consumer benefits because they pay a lower price at the end of it all. Now, this is the view that the government takes, as you probably know, from competition policy. So the government will try to prevent monopolies happen happening to ensure that there's a competitive marketplace that takes place. Now, Michael Porter says that if your market is competitive, then suppliers have got power, customers have got power, new entrants enter the market continually, and there's lots of rival products. Now, clearly, as a company, you want to limit these. You want to make sure that you can shrink these external pressures as much as you can to ensure that you are number one in the market. You are in prime position. So the first thing you probably want to do is you want to look to get more power over your suppliers. So if you look at Michael Porter's theory here, Michael Porter is asking the question, how powerful are your suppliers? Can your suppliers dictate the price that they charge you as a company? Now this can tend to come about if you are reliant on one supplier, so you actually put dependency on them, they can start to set the terms and the payment terms and the agreement terms and then slowly by pushing up the price, you either have to pass that on to the customer, which might make you less competitive, or you might have to reduce your profit margins. So as a company you're trying to reduce the power of your suppliers you may look to try and use two or three different suppliers or try and play them off against each other to ensure that you are in pole position you are minimizing the cost and you are dictating what they do at the other end of the spectrum you've got your power of your customers how powerful are your customers a good business does not want its customers to be powerful because the powerful customers can technically dictate the price they'll haggle for what price they want to pay a good company wants to be in charge of the price the customers pay, so it wants to ensure that it's setting the price and the customer pays the price it chooses rather than the price the customer wants to pay. And again, that comes down to the power of the customer. Now, Michael Porter suggests that most organisations tend to tackle this one because it's an easy one as long as you don't allow your customer to haggle. Now, that's easier done in a retail market than it is done in a business-to-business -business market. But again, it's one of those factors that you want to do. And again, competition commission will tend to prevent a monopoly happening because it reduces the power of the customer. It takes away the chance to shop around. For example, this is like having the choice to go to EE, right, one phone company, and you might go to Vodafone, and you might go to O2, and you might go to 3. Get, eradicate another one of those players. Let's say that O2 and Vodafone came together. Then you'd only have a choice of three providers and so on. So it's taking away your chance to haggle. Another thing that every business tries to eradicate is the threat of new entrants. It wants to remove the chance of new entrants entering the market. Now, new entrants potentially cause a problem because they can drive down prices. They can potentially steal some of your market share. So you want to prevent them from getting there. You want to create what's called a barrier to entry. Now, a barrier to entry is what it says. It's a big barrier. You want to stop them getting in there. Now, the best barriers to entry typically come in the form of money. Large organizations can build up nice big stockpiles of money. So you might do an expensive marketing campaign that would stop some entrants from entering the market. You may lower prices. You can probably sustain a price war. So if you went on some destroyer pricing methods for a long time, you could probably eradicate the competition before they even get in there. If you think of the supermarkets, that's a good example of what they do in the UK. They have really eradicated the chance of any small new players entering the market. And of course, then you've got your threat of substitutes. So customers choosing an alternative product. A good business wants a unique selling point where there is no chance that the customer can choose somebody else's product as a substitute product. Substitute products are going to devalue your item. 
Because if you put the price up with yours, then there's a good chance they're going to swap to the other brand. And this is where price elasticity comes in. You want your product to be inelastic. However, to get it to be inelastic means that you need to have a unique selling point. You need to be number one. Now, Michael's Porter's Theory is all about that. Now, you could use this tool to assess any company. So when you're doing your exam, you could think back to this model you've seen here now and think, how does that affect the power suppliers? Or how does that affect the power of the customers? Or how competitive is the marketplace? Do those actions prevent new entrants from entering into the market? Or are there lots of alternative products that the customers are swapped to? And that's how you would use Michael Porter's tool to make good assessment decisions. It's a really, really good tool and one that we use all the time. Okay, that's it. You should now be able to use Porter's Five Forces to assess the competitiveness of a market and relate this to a business organisation. Don't forget to follow me on my Twitter account or on, give me a like on my YouTube channel. Also, you can tweet me at any areas of business you want me to cover in the future. And check out my brand new All Singing and Dancing website. It's businessbee.co.uk.